And I think, you know, do, this, do some math, number of believers since the creation of the world and testimonies. Man, it could take us like a couple million years to get through everybody's testimony in heaven, wouldn't it? But what a glory to God. Every one of them would be a testimony to what God has done and to His saving grace and to His mercy and to His wonderful diversity. Wow, how awesome that will be. But what that means is you may be blessed, and I say blessed, to not know the full deliverance from some situation in your lifetime. That deliverance may come when you hear the voice of Jesus say, okay, come on up here. It's time. And Paul even speaks to that when he speaks, I think it was to the Philippians, and he says, you have been counted worthy. You have been blessed enough to be able to suffer for Jesus. Wow. Now that's an un-American concept, isn't it? Judgment. God's judgment comes according to God's timetable. And His timetable is the best. Take a look at Psalm 75. Here, a psalm of Asaph. He says, We give thanks to You, O God, we give thanks, for Your wondrous works declare that Your name is near. Then it's a quote. This is prophetic speech now. When I choose the proper time, I will judge uprightly. That's the Lord speaking. When I choose the proper time, I will judge uprightly. The proper time could also be translated the appointed time. The earth and all its inhabitants are dissolved. I set up its pillars firmly. Selah. Selah? Yeah, that's that. Hey, stop a minute and think about what you just said or sang. Okay, think about that a minute. The earth and all its inhabitants are dissolved. I set up its pillars firmly. I set up its pillars firmly. Yes, the Lord established this universe on some pretty firm and amazing and complex physical laws of the universe. Scientists today are still trying to figure out how it all works. It's not as simple as Newtonian physics. You get into all of the quantum physics and you, you, you start reading that and you go, these guys are making this up. This can't be like this. Man, what? It's beyond our capability to understand how God has set this so firmly and yet for as far back as we can remember, you know what? You can count on the stars being in this part of the sky when you're looking from this part of the earth at this part of the year because He set all those things in motion and we can depend upon the tides and we can depend upon the seasons and we can depend upon the night and the day because God has set it firmly. So it's not going to dissolve because, well, it just ran out of steam and God just you know, kind of used some used parts to put it together. No. He's the one who will dissolve it. We know that because Peter told us that, right? In a moment, man, first world, first judgment, well, that was judged by water. Noah, the ark, you remember the story. But the world that we live in now, well, it's reserved for some fire. In another place, it talks about how in Christ all things consist or are held together. And there's the idea that what God will do when He recreates the heavens and the earth is He'll let go of the strong force so that all of those molecules where the protons which should be repelling one another are stuck together in the middle of the atom, He's going to let go. He's going to turn off the strong force and all every molecule will break down to subatomic particles and just go... And if we were standing outside the universe and looking, it would look like it all dissolved into all these little particles. Kind of like when Gru uses that, uh, that ray gun. Anybody see Despicable Me? That's a great movie. i got to tell you, two blockbusters this year. Toy Story 3 and Despicable Me. That's my, that's my kind of movie, okay? And, and i got to tell you, we went and saw it yesterday because I said, you know what, it's going to be really hot today and we have no air conditioning in our house except a bedroom and we don't want to just sit up there all day, so why don't we like 4 or 5 o'clock go see a movie because it will be air conditioned. And that's what we saw. And he's got this ray gun and in a couple places, you know, they hit things and it's just 
goes to dust. And that's what the universe will do. And then God will recreate it. God will do that at the appointed time. Even unbelievers talk about the judgment day. I think there's a movie called that too, which has nothing to do with God's judgment. At the appointed time. You see, that is something to hold on to. Because we can trust in the justice of God. We can trust in that. Asaph wrestled with that in Psalm 73. Wait a minute, I see the prosperity of the wicked. Where's the justice in that? God, why are you letting these things continue on? But we can trust in the justice of God that at the appointed time, He will bring justice and all accounts will be paid in full. And we can also rejoice in the fact that if your life is hidden in Christ, that your account is already paid in full. So that in that day, when you see from God's perspective how much you really owe, oh, we can justify and we can rationalize and say, oh, well, that wasn't that bad. Oh, well, I'm not as bad as those people. Or, well, it was just a little white lie. All those things that we make excuses for and say, well, it's not that bad. We will see from God's perspective exactly how deep and dark those things are. And we will also see at the top of that list as if it were stamped in Jesus Christ's blood, paid in full. He said it from the cross. It's finished. It's done. How awesome is that? We can depend upon the justice of God. And I have seen in my own lifetime in certain people's situations where God's justice was meted out in this lifetime. And I have seen in other circumstances, it wasn't. I couldn't see it. But I can depend and know the faithfulness of God that the day is coming when all accounts will be paid in full. And I'm just glad that my account is paid by His mercy and by His grace. Hallelujah. I am so thankful that God, God's timetable is what he went by. Or I wouldn't be saved. I had 22 and a half years to get my act together. And I didn't. And if God's judgment upon me had come in a more timely manner, I would never have come to that place of getting on my knees and asking Christ to come into my heart. But he was merciful enough. Because just like Peter says in the book of Peter, he says, don't think about God's judgment and the day of the Lord being delayed as God doesn't care or that He's slack about His promises. Oh, no, 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 no. First of all, we're stuck in time. God's outside of time. A thousand years a day, you know, they're interchangeable to the Lord. And God is not slack in His promises. But it is God's desire that none should perish and that all should come to an everlasting relationship with Him. That's His desire. God chooses the time of judgment. And I'm glad for that. Psalm 76 talks about how powerful God is in judgment. Sometimes we can look at situations and go, well, yeah, but it's kind of like the court system. You know? They pled down and they got a light sentence. God, you didn't really give it to them like I would have in that situation. God is powerful in judgment. 